This is a very distinctive bronze statue come memorial. It has resided in Victoria Square in London for just over a century, paying tribute to those who served with the Imperial Camel Corps in World War I. Part of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force led by General Archibald Murray. The majority of the Camel Corps were Anzacs. There were four brigades, two from Australia, one from New Zealand and one from Great Britain and the Commonwealth. At any one time, one of which would be resting. Many of those involved with the Camel Corps were veterans of the Gallipoli campaign. There was also a fair splattering of other Commonwealth countries involved as well. Hong Kong, Singaporeans and Indians all fought alongside the Kiwis. Those three units provided artillery and heavy machine gun support. The average soldier possessed little more than a Lee Enfield rifle. At its peak, the Imperial Camel Corps was about 4,150 strong and boasted 4,800 camels. Somewhere between 400 to 450 New Zealanders fought in the Camel Corps during its lifetime. That was early 1916 to mid-1918. 41 would be killed. Disease claimed about eight of those. The names of the dead are immortalised on the base of the statue. The majority of Kiwi Kemaliers came from the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade and within that was a contingent of three regiments. The Auckland Mounted Rifles, the Wellington Mounted Rifles and the Canterbury Mounted Rifles which are the ones pictured. It must have been a real steep learning path for the New Zealanders going from horses to camels. Here is what one of them, the distinctively named Beethoven Alga, had to say on that subject. Oh, well, they were terrible things when we were introduced to them, but you, you shouldn't get used to their habits and what happened. But they were marvellous animals, really, you know, they could go for days and days without anything to eat. The New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade worked in unison with the Camel Brigade. The Mountain Brigade still on occasion engaged the enemy cavalry style, charging the Turkish positions, which I'll later touch on when I get to Bathsheba. The Cameliers would instead dismount before engaging. To start with, there was the 15th New Zealand Camel Company, and that was soon doubled to include the 16th Camel Company. A point that is often overlooked was that a major chunk of the Camel Corps wasn't actually the frontline troops. If it wasn't for the Camel Transport Corps tagging along, the force would have had limited impact and been confined to hit and run engagements. The non-combatants in the Transport Corps were largely drawn from the local Egyptian population. It took four logistical personnel to keep one soldier in the field fed, watered, housed, etc. That's before you factored in the extra camels needed to haul all the ammunition and supplies. The ratio between the camels used by the troops versus those coming up the rear loaded with supplies was 5 to 1. The camel corpse even came with in-house vets, dentists and doctors. Take a look at the loads they carried in the photos, and the sheer length of those lines. It must have made an incredible sight to see this great armada of men, machinery and camels moving across the desert expanses. Real Lawrence of Arabia stuff. And by the way, I was going to play the theme from that movie. Only YouTube would have flagged it, so you're going to have to put up with some more camel grunts instead. 
Another key factor that doesn't get a whole lot of credit in the write-ups on the subject was the role played by the railway. In a major feat of engineering and sheer manpower, over 13 months starting in April 1916, a major railway was built specifically for the Sinai campaign. A water pipeline ran parallel to the tracks. Trains were used to get troops, supplies and camels closer to the front. Those photographs of the camels on the train are captivating. You'll see an HK brand on one of the beasts. That meant it was assigned to the Hong Kong contingent. There was therefore a lot more to the camel corpse than just the pointy end, the men with guns. And speaking about the pointy end, let's deal with the two major engagements that Kiwi Camelers were involved with as part of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force. And in doing so, answer the question, why did they end up there in the first place? Number one, let me sum up the all but forgotten Sinai campaign between April 1916 till January 1917 in a hundred words or less. The Allies needed to protect the Suez Canal from capture by the Turks and ensure their most direct supply line was kept open. To effectively man the entire length of the canal was impossible so the only other solution was to drive the Turkish forces out of Sinai altogether. Number two. The second major engagement the New Zealanders were involved with, including the Cameliers and the mounted troops, was in Palestine. That followed on from the success of the Sinai campaign and was part of an initiative to drive the Turkish out of the Middle East altogether. Essentially, that occurred after the Third Battle of Gaza in late October, early November 1917, which resulted in the Allied forces pursuing the retreating Turks not just out of Palestine, but Jordan and Syria as well. The Camel Corp was at the forefront of both battles and the pursuit. The Battle of Bathsheba deserves a video on its own, and should be spoken about in the same tones as Gallipoli in respect to the bravery shown by the New Zealand mounted rifles. The Israeli government treat Beersheba with the reverence it deserves. They have built an Anzac memorial centre in Beersheba, and beside it a cemetery of all the Allied troops who died at the battle, 44 of them New Zealanders. Bathsheba has also become a go-to place for the Australian public and it's the Australians who have somewhat hijacked history in making the battle their victory rather than an Anzac one. To close this one off, I'm going to leave you to take in some more enthralling photos. Thanks to the Army Museum preserving these priceless pieces of history, which I feel a great deal of pride presenting to you today. In the description below is a video I did on the most decisive event New Zealanders were involved in in World War II. That took place in the Pacific, and like this story, it's unbelievable. There hasn't been a movie about it. Check it out if you enjoyed this one. Putting a like and commenting pushes up my videos when punters search for the stuff on YouTube. History like this needs to be viewed by more New Zealanders. And you can help me out there. Bye for now.